Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this Open Reality webinar with Mojo, um, entitled How Smart Is Your Wi-Fi? Now, I'm Carlos. I'll be chairing today. Um, now, just a few things before I hand over to your presenters. Um, now, everybody's going to be on mute this morning just for everybody's convenience, but obviously, we really welcome your questions. Obviously, questions uh, are a great thing for a webinar, um, so please do put them in, in the chat client. Now, your presenters this morning are actually going to be Brandon, who is one of our wireless account managers uh, in the Open Reality team, and he's going to just be taking you through what we're now doing at Open Reality. And then we're going to be handing over to Ian Tell, who's going to be taking us through the presentation this morning, and obviously giving you a deep dive into obviously what we can be can be done with Mojo Networks. So, without you having to listen to my voice for too much longer, let me pass over to Brandon. Thank you very much, Carlos. Uh, so as, uh, as Carlos mentioned, uh, I'm Brandon Biggs. I'm one of the wireless account managers here at Open Reality. Uh, I'm not going to take up too much of your time this morning, but I did just want to run you through briefly uh, a little bit about Open Reality and our background uh, in regards to Wi-Fi. So our sort of beginning started with, uh, with the Ekahau Wireless Site Surveying Tools, which we've been distributing now uh, since 2006. So essentially tools that allow you to be able to design, uh, deploy and validate wireless networks. Um, over the past few months in particular, we've wanted to make a bit more of a push into, uh, into the wireless space um, with the end goal really being to be able to have a, a life cycle offering for our partners and for our customers um, around that sort of wireless, uh, wireless deployment. So Echohel is the beginning piece of that puzzle, uh, obviously it allows you to be able to, to take into account your network requirements based on your devices, based on your application use, based on what you're planning on getting out of that network, and then being able to move forward from there, deploy, validate, make sure that it's working as expected, and troubleshoot moving forwards. Now, the Mojo Networks piece, obviously, that's what we're here to talk about today, so I'm not going to touch too heavily on this. I will allow Ian to show off uh, Mojo in all its glory, so we'll pop through this one. We have recently also started working with the team from Hive Radar, um, who are a, essentially a, a wireless survey kit. So it works hand in hand with your uh, your Echohel tools and that sort of thing, uh, in the sense it allows you to be able to do AP on a stick surveys. So traditionally what we've seen from working with Echohel over the years uh, was that a number of our, our users were sort of doing some uh, MacGyver type style creations in their sheds. Um, to create AP on a stick survey kits, which consisted of uh, painters' poles and, and, uh, and uh, camera tripods and all sorts of different things to help uh, in doing a pre-deployment survey. Um, this essentially removes all that need and sort of condenses it down into one nice piece of kit. So, and then finally, to wrap up our uh, our life cycle of wireless, we have the Seven Signal solutions. So. These are essentially an overlay uh, piece of kit that complements your existing wireless network. If you have one in place, um, essentially can allow you to be able to troubleshoot uh, and monitor the network remotely. So, other than that, uh, that essentially wraps up what we're doing at the moment. I will uh, hand over to Ian, but if there is any questions on any of the solutions that we're working with, or you want to bounce some ideas around, uh, around, you know what potentially might work in your environment, any troubles that you're having, um, or really just to have a quick chat, um, feel free to get in contact with us. You can reach us at uh, sales at openreality.co.uk, um, or obviously our phone number is there. Uh, otherwise, feel free to get in contact with your uh, dedicated account managers, who I'm sure you would have been in touch with over the past few weeks. So other than that, appreciate your time. I uh, hope you enjoy the webinar, and Ian, we will hand over to you. Right, good morning. Hopefully you guys can all hear me. Um, just, just as a heads up, I apologise for this now. I'm actually sitting in a hotel, um, and the cleaner has decided that she's going to start cleaning the room next door. <laughs> so I apologise for that. Um, so today's today's uh, presentation is about Mojo Networks. We used to be airtight, so we come from a very big security background. Um, one of the objects of today is to, to understand what Mojo delivers. Mojo delivers probably the most scalable solution on the planet for um, 
for, for networks, for Wi-Fi networks. For example, our largest customer has 120,000 access points on a single instance across the subcontinent of India and does one terabyte of data a day and has a million users. That's a single instance. If you look at our nearest competitor, begins with an R on that scale, they can only do 30,000 on a single instance. We're massively secure, highly secure. Um, Gartner says we are the world's leader for WIPs. Um, we're in secret places like the Pentagon and stuff like that. But what we do is we provide big data analytics, and I'm going to show you some of that on a university in a minute, um, which allows you to troubleshoot, monitor, maintain, and in the long term, fix the network without you actually having to do anything. So we're increasing the user experience. So that means students are going to be happier, staff are going to be happier, guests are going to be happier. One of the things that we also have is we have a lot of awards, and I'm going to flick onto this quickly. Um, from the cloud computing, we were given the Cloud Security Excellence Award because we are better than everyone else. We have to be. We're new to the market. We're not Meraki. We're not Aruba. We're not Ruckus. We don't have that established name. So we have to be better. Um, for, the American Award here that I brought up is the School College Planning Award. In the US, for the past five or six years, Aruba has won that, and they've had the Platinum Award. This year, we kicked them out. We're now the Platinum Award winner. We're getting a lot of traction within the marketplace. We're winning a lot of awards. We're actually partners with Facebook and Google now. But what are the demands on the Wi-Fi network? It's about the amount of resource I have. I have more and more devices. I have to become an IP specialist. I have to become a routing specialist. I have to become a security specialist. I have to become a device specialist. Do I have thousands of members of people on my staff that can actually do all this work? Not a lot of the time I don't. I have... I have dwindling resources but I have more problems so that resource gap we're going to help you with we're going to reduce some of that problems the way we're going to do that is we're going to show you how we work so we all know this and I'm not going to teach you to suck eggs we know there's three to five devices you know you go to McDonald's you go to Tesco's you go to the top of a mountain you can find Wi-Fi okay what's really important is the applications that are running on the Wi-Fi so all the APs are the same. I don't care what anybody says. We all use the same standards. We all use transmit beam forming. We all use um, aggregate HTT throughput. We all do the same technology because we have to meet with standards. But if I can provide you an effective road, i.e. the Wi-Fi, to run your apps over, then I need to know that the apps are going to work the way that you want them to work. So. Wi-Fi always gets the blame. So if we go back to that slide, you might have a problem with, let's say, getting onto the internet because your router's down or that your Skype for Business isn't working properly because of an application issue. But the Wi-Fi will always get the blame. The Wi-Fi is rubbish. I can't get on the Wi-Fi. It's the end of the world. So what we have is we have, we have uh, the capability and uh, what we call the, the client journey is we look at things such as the association, the authentication, the network, and the application. If we look at all of the manufacturers that are in the marketplace, we'll take authentication because I like this one. From an authentication perspective, I will tell you that you have failed authentication if you're using a another manufacturer. Authentication can be a big many things. For example, I had to drive from North London to Dover one day when I used to work for another company because a customer was threatening to pull out the Wi-Fi network. I drove to the site, which took me two and a half hours. I walked onto the site. I walked into the headmaster's office, and I typed in the pre-shared key. 32 seconds later, I was back in my car. I was driving home. The point is, if I give you the tools that tell you where you failed on the Wi-Fi network or where you failed on the wired network, you can fix the problem remotely without having to send a guy across a campus or across a country to fix a problem. You know, a lot of places have multiple offices with multiple Wi-Fis, and I want to be able to monitor that Wi-Fi in, let's say, Liverpool from London and fix the problem in Liverpool without leaving my seat. So we've done that now. We give you a direct insight into where the Wi-Fi has failed. So literally, in real live time, I can troubleshoot and tell you exactly where a client has failed. I can tell you whether it's a wired issue or a Wi-Fi issue. 
I can tell you whether it's a poor performance and if that poor performance is actually a th uh, uh, actually causing me authentication issues. So if I have low data rates, high, high retries, I might not pass my ePoll. When I'm failing on ePoll, I can't authenticate. Okay, so we're actually showing you where you're failing on the network. <clears throat> so the elements of our system are quite effective. And sorry, guys, I, I, I do talk quickly. Um, so network management, we give you the drill down, we give you the, 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 the visibility of the entire infrastructure that you're building. Okay, so if you have multiple offices around the world, around this country, or you have a large campus, we can do that as a building per floor, as a site, as a country, whatever you want to do, we can build that. I've, sh I've gone into a bit of the advanced troubleshooting, I'm going to show you some of that. We have a full API, so if you run your own systems where you want to drag information out, you could do that as well. One of our customers doesn't even use our interface. There's a small American company in the US called Comcast, um, they don't even really use our interface. They drag everything out via an API, present it to, to the end user, and the end user can do all their configuration. We have inbuilt captive portals that allow us to do email authentication, SMS authentication, uh, self-registered authentication, paid for Wi-Fi. Um, the list is huge. So now we're giving you a lot more flexibility. So from a business perspective, I can do a self-signed SSID, which means when you come and visit me, and I'm visiting Ian Tell. When I log in, I type in my email address on the capture pool. It sends me an email. I allow you on the network. Secure two-factor Wi-Fi authentication for guest users included. No extra licenses, nothing at all. One price, one license, everything. I'm going to come on to security in a sec. Sorry, going to take a sip of water. I'm going to come on to security on another slide in a second. And there's that slide now. I think we're all aware of this from our industry. And the reason why I bring this up, this attack doesn't happen very often. But if I'm providing guest access, I'm providing corporate access, I'm providing any form of access, I have a care of duty to my staff and to my guests to protect them from nasty people trying to attack or disrupt the network. So by using our third radio, we actually have the capability to mitigate all of these issues that came out on that day. So from day one, we were mitigating and quarantining users that were attacking the network with this. Other manufacturers took six weeks to fix this issue on the AP side. It's just this one here. This is the only one on the AP. Fast transition handover. Other companies said, turn it off. Well, if I'm doing anything that does voice over Wi-Fi or requires me to roam effectively, well, I've just turned off a feature that actually helps me my network perform. Okay, it's not very clever, but hey. So we had a fix, it came out, we did it. But this is where we start getting really important now. So all of the cloud hosted systems, Meraki, uh, Ruckus, Aruba, everybody has this. AWS, or they do it on their own platforms, but they have SSA 16 certification. SSA 16 certification is about the security of the physical data center. So that's easy because AWS do that for us. If I go and visit a data center, I need to book an appointment. I ring up, they've got dual redundant fibers. It's their responsibility to protect the data center. So I said a sweeping statement earlier about Mojo has to be better than everybody else. Well, we are. So we are responsible for the security in the cloud of your data. We are going to be the only company in the world that does Wi-Fi that is GDPR compliant. Now, that documentation will be coming out very shortly, and we've got a list of about 150 things that we checkbox that actually makes us GDPR compliant from a Wi-Fi captive portal and user perspective. But coming back to this, where we're responsible for the security in the cloud of your data and we do all the application availability, et cetera. That ties us back into ISO 27001. We are one of the only companies in the world, again, that is ISO 27001, which allows us to lead into things such as FedRAMP, such as GDPR compliance, et cetera. It's really, we are a step above. 
There's a company in the marketplace that didn't do this disaster recovery or change management. It's in the public domain. They're one of the big cloud Wi-Fi providers and they lost customer data because they're not responsible for your data in the cloud. They don't care. But we do. We have to. We have to be better than everyone else. We have to be a step above. So as you can see, we have FedRAMP. We have the SOC 2 Wi-Fi compliance and we have ISO 27001. We put a lot of controls in place because we are in places like the Pentagon. We are in places like, well, big blue airplane with a big American president on with, I think it's hair's fake. That's another story. Um, but we do security at a very, very high level. So let's come on to the kit. We don't have controllers. We don't tie you to a controller based, and I'm going to say this, a legacy based system because I don't have to have racks of controllers to manage thousands of access points, which take up power, take up time, take up air conditioning, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's all our responsibility. We're a green company in theory, because we do it for you. We reduce your power requirements, we, and, and we increase your usability of the network by not having controllers. So we do other APs, but I'm just gonna raise these two today. The C110 and the C130 are, our, I would say, are our go-to top of the range access point, two by two and a four by four. So one 2.4 gig radio, one five gig radio, and a third radio that is software definable. But we use that software definable network to offer 24 by seven, 365 wireless intrusion prevention. We have more memory than any other manufacturer on the planet, and we have more processing power. We run quad core processes in our APs. And the reason behind that is we have something called a ring buffer. This is unique to Mojo Networks. For every client that attaches to my access point, I'm gonna capture 200 packets. These are primarily radio headers, DHCP, four-way handshakes, EPOL, radius, et cetera, et cetera. Anything that is, is, is affects me getting on or doing my job on the Wi-Fi. We do capture 20 IP packets, but we don't really do a lot or anything with it because it's not relevant to us. We don't care about that. But what you'll notice here is packet number five has come up with a failure. Well, if packet number five was okay and it worked fine, what would happen is we would just overwrite that buffer. But because we've got a failure there, we're now going to send that information to the cloud. And we're going to store that in the long term for a year. Currently, it's seven days. In the next couple of months, it's going to be a month, and then it will go out to a year. <clears throat> but you'll notice that that gives me several benefits. If we take a, 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 a college, a school, um, you will always get a teacher walk past the IT room. Go, By the way, I was in classroom five the other day and the Wi-Fi was terrible. Well, that's not good enough two days later because how do you fix that problem? You can't fix that problem. You don't know what the problem was. Oh, can you do me a favor? Can you ring me next time you get that problem? Well, they're trying to teach kids. Well, actually, with our system, you go back in time, look for their MAC address of their device, and it will show you exactly why it failed. And I'm going to show you and prove that to you in a second. OK, so all the manufacturers on the planet do something called background scanning. So background scanning means I have to go offline, I have to listen to what's going on around me for 100 milliseconds. And I can go, oh, radio resource management, I need to turn my power down, I need to change channel. Um, oh, someone's attacking my network. Um, oh, neighbor and AP, that power's really high and the channel's interfering with my channel. In 100 milliseconds, I have to do that. Well, that is, is really difficult to do. So what I'm going to do is I've got an image. I'm going to pop it on the screen for you. And in a hundred, and literally, please, it's not 100 milliseconds, but it's, it gives you an idea of what we're trying to achieve. If I press that now, tell me what that picture was. You got a glimpse of something. Well, that's the same as background scanning. I get a glimpse of something. Do I know whether you're attacking my network? Well, actually, in that 100 milliseconds, if I'm not attacking the network or there's not a heavy high duty cycle, well, I'm not going to change anything. Well, 200 milliseconds later, maybe that'll change, but I'm not going to notice it. So with our third radio, what we do, and right, guys, I need to give you a warning. There are flashing images on this screen, okay? But what we do is we don't just take a, a, a glimpse a snapshot of that we run fully 24 by 7 365 
all of those features with the third radio. So the third radio is doing RRM, it's doing whips, it's doing neighbor protection. In this image, we now see that someone was attacking my network. They were disrupting my network. Well, how do you see that from 100 milliseconds? So with our third radio, can you imagine if we could do some of these? Use a spectrum analyzer. Maybe we can do load, multicast. Maybe we could test the neighbor's AP. Well, actually, we do that right now. So all of these tests here, right here, we do right now with a third radio. <clears throat> so let's say I'm managing a wireless network. What I'm going to do is every morning, I'm going to run a test on your network at 5 a.m. And it's going to turn the third radio here into a client. It's going to act like a laptop. It's going to log onto the wireless network. It's going to do association, DHCP, DNS, RAN tests. It will actually go off and test applications on your network as well for the latency, etc. What that actually does for me is I can look at your network without getting off my seat and all automatically it will send me an email if there's a problem with your network. So right here, I've got a problem with my WAN, but it will report that to me. So in theory, I can be on your site or I can have an engineer en route to you before you've even realized that your network has failed. I can do this as well. I can turn the third radio into validation. So this is a classroom, let's say, or an office, whatever. And someone rings up and says, I can't get on the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi is really bad. Well, I know that this access point can hear that access point because that's the way we build Wi-Fi. And I want that client to actually, I'll now turn that radio into a client and I'll get it to test the other AP. Yeah, I can see you've got a problem on that. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of retries. What's going on? Now I can drill down further without leaving my seat, without getting in my car and driving to a site to fix a problem. I can be proactive and I can be reactive. This is some of the testing that we do on our network. So when we run the test, we run the authentication, the association. You can see that the security method, the latencies. I can see DNS timeouts. I can see the throughput on the network. Hang on a minute. I can do a voice over IP MOS score on the Wi-Fi network. Yes, we do that as well. Here we've used Google Drive as a, as a highlight of what we can test from an application spe specification. And here we do Wi-Fi testing. We don't do manual packet captures anymore. It is all automated. It will give you information that you need to fix a problem on the network immediately. We also do switches now, which is quite nice. Guys, these are not core or distribution layer switches. They're access layer switches. So now I can manage the Wi-Fi and I can manage the switches and I can tell what AP is connected to which switch port and what users are connected on that AP at a time. So now I've got a full solution and a single pane of glass to manage the Wi-Fi and manage the, the, the access layer switches. I just want to bring this up. This is quite important to us. Gartner, we're on the Gartner Magic Quadrant. Basically, it says you need to evaluate us because we are leaders within the marketplace. Um, we are disruptive. We are very disruptive, actually. Um, we're seeing a lot of pickup in the, in the UK, massive pickup, actually. We're doing some really large opportunities. But Gartner are just reinforcing our story here. The security, our licensing model, our hardware purchasing model, it's very, very simple. There's none of this, you have to buy this firewall and that feature and this. You choose an AP, you choose how many years, thank you very much, you've got the lot, including 24 by 7, 365 support. So I'm just going to come out of this. Carlos, do we have any questions at this moment in time? There's, there's a handful of questions, guys. Thank you for the questions and please do keep them coming. Um, there was one in regards to uh, the MOS scoring that you were just showing uh, a second ago, and it's uh, yep. what codecs are supported for testing MOS scores. So at this moment in time, we just do a standards-based MOS score across using latency and jitter. Our plan will be that we will go for G. We will put a st we will put in that same sort of box a, a tech tick box you can select to choose the codec you want to test natively on the network. Fantastic. 
Um, right, the next question then, mate, is how does it help with GDPR compliance? Okay, that's a totally different subject, um, but because of the control of the data processor and the processing of that data, we have a, we're going to be coming out with documentation very shortly about that. But bear in mind that when any, whenever a user logs into your Wi-Fi network using a captive portal, you have their data. You have the right to be forgotten, so you have to have a way of removing that data. We have that capability. We've built a lot of functionality into our back end on that. Um, I don't want to get dragged down that that um, can of worms, that 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 big tunnel. Um, as soon as we have the documents, Carlos, can you make a note of who that 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 person was? And as soon as the documentation is released, we'll get that information, all the official information, directly out to you. I think what well, we can we can do better than that. We'll make sure that it goes out to everybody. But also, I think it, it's such a big topic. We'll uh, we'll put it onto the onto the yeah. blog site and I'll Brilliant. share it. It's, as well. it's it's a huge differentiator for us. Absolutely. Um, there are no other questions at this this time in. So uh, okay. obviously, maybe going into um, obviously the technical part, maybe the place to start now. Okay, guys. Um, thank you very much, Carlos. Um, you can see that this is our, our, one of our customers. This is our dashboard, and you'll see that I'm logged in under Mojo Engineering. We have a very, very strong relationship with this customer. We are allowed to show you this data, so we do not worry, have to worry about data protection, etc. We have contracts and all the legal stuff done. They are a reference site for us called UAX. They are on our website. Um, here, you could, this is the sort of thing that you would get. So here is the learning course. So we give you free learning. Um, we give you access to a brilliant support portal. I particularly like the support portal because it's easy. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel when I do this. So if I type in uh, configure SSID, it will give me information on how to do this thing. It will show me a video, best practices. It's simple. It's easy to use. Um, Canvas is where we do our captive portals. Guest Manager is where we do a lot of analytical data. So I want to see the flow through my sites. Here is the window that I've just popped up, which is Aware, Mojo Aware. This is the clever stuff. As you can see right now, as a high level overview on this site, I have 1,417 clients connected to the network. I got one guy that's failed to uh, associate. Let's have a quick look. Let's see why he's failed to associate. So failure what's the device how far away is he has he got the correct information this is live data as well guys so this could change straight away you're trying to connect to edge your but you can see he was six successfully connected so why is he dropped off i can drop into that packet if i need to and look further but if i just go back into this for a second uh authentication failures I've got 19 authentication failures. You tell me how you do this right now with any one of your existing systems. When a customer rings you up or an end user rings you up and says, I can't get on the Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi is broken. I can type in his MAC address, I can type in the device name, the username, and I can find that device. So if let's say this gentleman has rung me up and says he can't get on the Wi-Fi, actually I'm going to look at it right now. And he's typed in the wrong password. Simple. Tell me anyone else that can do that. So from a very simple, basic level, I can look at baseline and across my network. I can see clients with most failures. And actually, well, I can start getting into this now. Because we do the mapping on our systems, I can tell you what locations are affected by the most failures. And if we look here, this is the, uh, they're actually the outdoor APs. But three clients are being affected by uh, performance hits on that. So I'm giving you information to fix the problem on the network. If I look at the performance, and this is quite an interesting one here, we have the client health. So across this site, I'm seeing 101 clients with low RSSI, 28 with high retries, sticky clients, so voice issues. I, I can see these clients here. But what I'm clever now, actually, is I'm taking all of this information, and I'm actually putting this into top of locations affected by poor performance. So users with low RSSI's eyes outdoor. Well, that's okay. Well, let's have a look. I expect that outdoor. What about low data rates? Again, outdoor. People on APs that are trying to move too far away. I can see clients that are using a lot of data. I can see how much usage of the Wi-Fi network is happening. So I've got 1,600 users associated to the network with a volume of 36 gig. Well, actually, I want to drop down into the 5 gig, and I want to see what's going on here. Look at that. 
thousand users that are connected to the network on the five gig using 24 and a half gig of data. I've pressed two buttons, guys. I can see whether my clients are being affected on the five gig. I can see whether they're, that, that exercise is particularly bad. Yes, there's actually people using the network, which is what I want. You'll notice that this button says applications beta. Any one of you that are using any one of these applications, Hangouts, Skype, go to meetings, Skype for business, WebEx, we can now drill down into these sessions and we can tell whether clients are having good or bad sessions. Now, all of that traffic is encrypted data. How do we do it? We use machine learning. So we have gone to a lot of depth with machine learning to build a model that allows us to tell you whether you're getting bad or good sessions. Bad or good sessions means I affect the communication, the capabilities of my customers. So if I'm, I'm on a WebEx right now with you guys, if I was having a bad session and you couldn't hear me, you would drop off the call or you would lose interest, which means the business is not working properly or the teachers in the classroom that are trying to teach remotely lose the interest of, the, of, of their students. Or, you know, if we look at um, we look at a lot of the, the broadcasting companies nowadays, they do remote sessions. Well, if I can tell you that that session is bad, then I need to I need to do something quickly. So we're giving you information now where I can look at what's going on with the network and tell you whether the applications are working effectively, whether the, the, the user experience is bad. I could do live traffic debugs. Um, I can see the users that are using the network at the time or have used the network at the time. If I come into monitor, I can see all of the clients, all of the access points, the radios, the WLANs. And because I have <clears throat> an application firewall built into my network, into my APs, I can actually control the traffic at the edge. So YouTube, what have we got here? So someone's done in the last four hours, they've used eight and a half gig of YouTube. Hmm. Is that for education or is that someone actually just hammering the network? Oh, not really. So 10 meg, 20 meg, 30 meg. That's great. I can tell because we all have fair usage policies. And in an education environment, do I want a student hammering the net network for YouTube or Netflix or Bitstream or Torrent? Well, actually, I can start blocking that as well if I want to. For example, uh, some of the colleges we're working with now are blocking uh, Apple updates because the students come in. They don't want to do it on their on their datas. They want to do it on the Wi-Fi. So if they can do it at college, they'll do it at college and they'll use your air and your utilization. However, and we have this case study on our website, Marysville. They're using their API to do red and green zones. So from this application, I can block applications in specific areas so in a learning environment or in a hospital environment i can block certain applications and allow learning or health applications in the in the uh, canteen or the or the playground playground well i'm getting off playground um i can allow youtube or netflix in the library etc so this gives me full application visibility and seeing what i can do with that application visibility i also have alerting on my system there's no alerts on this. I'll show you my live system in a minute. Uh, let me see if he's imported the floor plans. I'm not sure if he has, but we'll have a quick look at the cafeteria. It looks like he has. Like, right. OK, so floor plans. I would think we all agree that fluffy floor plans with heat maps on are not that realistic. However, a floor plan that shows me the APs shows me how if I can run. So this is where we say run client connectivity test. So I use the third radio to talk to that AP. I can't do that at the moment, guys. It's a live network. OK, um, but I can view uh, the access point event logs. I can view the access point details. I get a lot of information from this just by looking at the screen. And also, if you see here, notice it's actually changed to the room. So this has got only got four APs in it. If I select this one, this one has 60 APs in it and 298 users connected to the network. OK, so you can see as from the drop down. So one of two things that can happen here, we can go to the top of the tree. We'll go to the dashboard. Sorry, we can go to the top of the tree. And if I can configure the network, I can configure all the way down here. 
with a single SSID from the top. But I might want to put a specific SSID in the cafeteria. Or I might want to have a different SSID in this area because I've got an event happening. We can do that. Um, as you can see, this is live data. So the network's changing constantly. This is, to me, I love this network. So let me just come out of this for a second. Carlos, do we have any questions while I'm just flipping over to my system? Uh we have a couple, mate, but probably uh, nothing to do with, uh, obviously, what we're currently showing. I'm happy to go through them, but you're probably going to lose your train of thought. So it's okay. probably better yeah. to save them to the end. No, that's fine by me. <clears throat> so, guys, you'll notice when I log type this one in, it says Alpha. Alpha is my test server. Um, this is the one that they give to us to break because we're engineers, and that's what we do quite a lot of. But it means we test, we break, we find things that... Um, other people don't know about and then we can fix them before they actually happen. So I've got nine clients connected to my AP, uh, APs at the moment. You will notice that my Skybox has a problem downstairs. I don't know why that's having a problem. Let's have a look why my Skybox is having a problem. Why is my Skybox having a problem? And the reason I'm going, for, look, it's an EPOL. Ooh, three or four. Maybe I'm too far away from that AP. But the point that I'm making here is I've been Instantly logged into my home network. I've looked at it in the last 12 hours, that's affected. But if I go down, hang on two seconds, guys, I'll just scroll down here. If I go down to a week's worth of data, you can see my clients. And this is the thing that I was saying to you. I'm not at home right now. My iPad is sitting next to me in Bradford. If I select my iPad right now, I'm going back in time, I'm looking at data. From April the 24th, I'm scroll. Oh, look, I typed in the wrong password. And if I want to, I could do a full packet trace and I can open that up and it, it'll open Mojo packets, which takes basically a PCAP packet capture and converts it into a visible format, which means you don't have to scroll through thousands and thousands of packets. I'm hoping this is going to open because this is an engineering server. Bear that in mind, guys. So if we just go back there while that's doing that. But you can see, I'm not even in the house, and I can fix a Wi-Fi problem. I can tell you why it didn't connect to the network. I got all my clients in the network. I've got my application visibility. Oh, there we go. So now it's opened up a packet. If we look here, oh, hang on, disassociation, because the station has left the network. What about this one? Left BSS. But it gives you an idea as to what's going on with the network when you were on the network without scrolling through thousands and thousands of packets. Simple and easy. Basically, Mojo Networks has made Wi-Fi networks simple. We've given you a layer three through seven wireless engineer in every single access point who's going to tell you what's wrong with your network. So I want to do this quickly because we all get this problem. So who am I going to kick off the network? I'm going to do this. So you get a student that rings you up. Miriam is my wife's name. So She's rung me up. I'm up north and she says, the Wi-Fi doesn't work. I can't get on the Wi-Fi. I can't do my shopping. It's the end of the world. <laughs> if she can't do her shopping, there's, you know, so I've got to look at this. So instead of me going, oh, I need to open up Wireshark. I need to do a packet capture. What AP are you connected to? I look at the system. I go, ah, Miriam's iPad. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start a live client debug. I press one button. I press start. I've selected it for five minutes. Five minutes isn't long, but it's, it's, it's the test that we're just trying to do. I'm trying to show you something. And I'm hoping, as we say in um, films and TV, you should never work with children or animals. Doing live demos when I'm not at home because I can't flick on and off my iPad, I can't, sometimes doesn't always work in the best manner. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kick her off the network. So physically, I've disconnected her from the network, which means she should have to do a reassociation and authentication. Look at that four-way handshake. I told the client, I've got my DHCP address. I can tell what's wrong with the network. If I, if I select her, I can actually tell you as well from client logs exactly what's happened. At this point here, she had a really low data rate. Okay. By the way, when I set data rates on my network, I've, I've specifically set them. So if I show you the thresholds here, I've deliberately set them really low and really high just so I've got data to show you guys. If also as well, I select my my um, my 
my alerts, I can tell where the network has failed. I can have that email to me as well. Okay. This is a very, very simple, very, very effective solution. If I go into configure, I apologize, it appears that the internet is extremely slow in this hotel. If we look at the top of the tree now, I only have one SSID that's on. Okay. But I have a list of all these SSIDs that I've built in different places. If I scroll down to my tested environment, and when it says Ian Office, it's a shed really. All right. You will notice that my configuration for my office actually has two SSIDs on. This is the point I was making to you earlier. I want to build SSIDs where I need them or when I need them. So if we go to the top of the tree, I want to build a new SSID. And I'm just showing you this for simplicity's sake, because there's a lot of systems out there that to add an SSID is complex and painful. Okay, test. Now, if I keep it private, if I go into security, I want to select what level of security I want, WPA2. I'm not going to select 802.1x because I don't have a radius server available to me. And I'm not going to type in a password. I want to show you something. Now I'm going to go onto the network. Oh, hang on a minute. It's now giving me an exclamation mark to say that I've done something wrong. Which is great. Because now I know that I've got to go back from an exclamation mark and fix something. I haven't worked my way all the way through the config and gone, what have I done wrong? What have I forgotten to do? Okay. You'll note here that we do bridged, which just changed the VLAN. So if your student VLAN is 101, you put 101 and you bridge it, it takes a DHCP scope from there. However, the other thing that we have is netted. So we can actually turn an AP into a single a single um, DHCP server for a specific. So one of the things we're doing is with uh, some hotel groups is they have APs in every room. And they're now giving their, their guests an email before they turn up on site. The, so it tells them, if you log into this, you can configure your own SSID. So you're going to have an SSID in the room. Student accommodation, they're jumping all over this at the moment because now the students can have their own SSID. They can put their Apple TVs on they, and they can keep the traffic locally. It doesn't broadcast out across the entire network. Okay, so, so that's really useful for us. Here, if I want to con configure analytics, I'm going to uh, actually, now let's do something. I want to deliberately break this again. Access control. So I said we have a firewall built into our AP. I can't enable the application firewall because I haven't turned it on, which is analytics up here. That's why I didn't want to click it. But if I select this button here, now I turn it on. Now I have an application level firewall where I can actually click into this. I can select the category. I want to block games. If I can select all, I'm going to block Battle.net. Okay. I don't know what Battle.net is, but Battle.net sounds quite cool. And I'm just going to block it. Literally, I've built a rule in seconds to block applications on my network. I haven't had to go into war and peace. I haven't had to learn a brand new system. I've just followed the system. However, if I select this little tab up here, you'll notice now that some things have gone highlighted and it allows you to start configuring those things, but give you a clue. So here, PSK, WPA key vulnerabilities. That's what we talked about earlier, WPA crack. If I type that in there now and I move to network, Bang. Ooh. Should I tell you why? A, it wasn't eight characters. B, I didn't press next. Now, access control. I didn't save it, okay? Or I didn't type that field in. So, what I'm going to do is actually cancel that. I'm going to leave this for a moment because I want to go back here to create another one. You'll notice now. I've got a captive portal pop up and it's told me that I haven't typed in the, the name of the SSID, which is fine. But on this occasion, I want to enable a captive portal. I want to do this. OK, that's a nice picture, but it doesn't suit what I need it for. So if I select the pencil and yes, <laughs> I have done this before. So the image is sitting on my desktop. OK, but the reason I just and I have done nothing with this. OK, I've done nothing with it at all. I haven't cut it, I haven't modified it, I haven't done anything. By the way, there's your terms of use. We can change that. We can change the privacy policy, etc. If I save that, it makes an API call on the back and it changes the images. So instantaneously, I can see what I'm doing with this. 
with our system I'm taking off click through I just want to log on via social okay so I'm gonna select Facebook LinkedIn Twitter Instagram Google I have no idea what Foursquare is and I'm gonna save that and look instantly it will change this and show you that I can now log in using Foursquare or LinkedIn or anything that I want to do this is very simple very easy very it's this is why I'm gonna move I'm gonna get rid of this because this is what I think is really cool let's get rid of that because now I want guests to self-register maybe I want to do host approval maybe I want you to log in and do so College Up North is using it exactly for this all of their students have an email address they're allowing the students to self-register onto the network using their network and do their BYOD process like that. It's simple, it's easy. There's a lot more to it than that because they've got firewalls on the back end, smooth walls and all that. But they don't have to do anything to add their devices onto the network. And actually, it enables and helps with safeguarding the prevent strategies because all that data is listed. Where I selected early analytics, I can select association. Well, when I tie a user to a captive portal, that user now, I've got that data. I can see where that student's going. I can see if it's anything that we need to be concerned about. I can see if I'm a, a corporate business, whether someone tried to do something naughty on my network. The point of this is that we've made a very, very simple, very, very easy solution to use. You know, here, I really like this. I mean, this is, in my eyes, I think this is one of the best ways of doing things. I'm an enterprise environment. You turn up on my on my on my site. You log into my Wi-Fi. You type your mobile number in. Now I'm not getting into this uh, Mickey Mouse at Disney.com. I'm actually doing two-factor authentication. I've used an email or I'm using SMS to confirm that you are who you say you are and you have that device available to you. The the world that we live in nowadays is about security, about uh, responsibility to people and knowing that people don't do anything naughty on the network but also providing them a solution that works effectively and easily um, we tried to do this for a set of gyms but it doesn't work because most of the gyms are in a basement and they can't get a phone signal so now we do it via an email and we allow them to capture portal pop up grab that and, and down they go so we're just coming up to the end of the webex now we've got 10 minutes to go um, just wondering if we've got any questions out there at the moment that people want answering while I'm while I'm doing this. Anything out there, Carlos? Or there's a couple of questions. Uh, so the the first one is, can you collect spectrum analysis data? <laughs> so if I do this, turn on spectrum analysis. Um, I doubt we're going to see anything, guys, because there's no one at my house at the moment. But I've just typed in the C130 that's downstairs. I can select either 2.4 or 5 gig. And I can start doing a spectrum analysis without doing anything. Guys, bear in mind, this isn't a Cisco Cognio. It's not an Echo House sidekick, but it does a couple of things. It will show you if you have a problem, which means that at that point, I want to take my Echo House sidekick. I want to go to site and I want to drill down into that problem. But I've done the initial fault finding, the troubleshooting remotely without doing anything. I pressed the button. Okay. Does that answer that question, Carlos? You, uh, do you think we're happy with that one? Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, this is never going to uh, replace uh, an Echo sidekick. But what Not it allows to do, um, is obviously, from a central point, understand whether you obviously need to take your your Echo kit out to that particular location, and obviously go go into sort of further deep dive um, understanding of what's happening in that location. Um, Here's a question then, Ian. Um, obviously, you've talked about the application servers, but are, are there any plans to do network switches? Yes, yeah, so we are coming out with switches. Um, they're going to be access layer switches. I'm not sure yet how we're going to do application stuff. I think the application stuff is going to be more on the APs. Um, we've just got basic layer two switches, so it, the control will be on the APs for that. Fantastic. Okay, and last question then uh, that I've got here at the moment is um, can you trend what devices are being brought onto the network? Uh, 
actually, I'm guessing by that, they're asking sort of, uh, you know, is it sort of mostly iPhones, iPads, et cetera, et cetera? So if we drill down into uh, access points, and I select, I don't know whether I'm going to get the data because there's no one home. No, I'm not going to get it. There is a way on our system that you will see the number of devices and the users and the type of devices. Um, and it will also tell you the type of devices that are fail. Actually, I wonder if I can get that out of, um, hang on two seconds, guys. Just logging back into UAX quickly. So if I select this, you see we categorize the data here. Vendor, operating system, they're the ones that are having the most authentication failures. So we can do it from that perspective. Okay. Um, so we've got a couple of minutes to go. Um, I think, and, and to, to, to wrap up from my end, so Mojo Networks um, gives you, we're more about the software. We don't care about the APs anymore. The APs all do the same thing. They all have the same flashing lights. They all have, this, you know, they've all got dual Ethernet ports, even though you don't need them. Um, we all do the same from an AP perspective. But the problem that I've got is I want to be able to fix the network. I want to be able to monitor the network. I want to trend the network over a year. And I want the network to fix itself. So where we're giving you this big data, for example, DFS. If I keep seeing DFS events on channel 124, 128, I want the system to learn, automatically blacklist those channels, and then send me an email going, I've reconfigured the network for you because you keep getting this problem. That's where we're going with our system, with the big data. So we're making your life easier, we're making your life simpler. The question is, do you want to be a leader or do you want to follow? Mojo Networks is going to be a leader within this industry. Um, we are a leader. We're, we're disruptive. We're, we're upsetting the marketplace. Um, and we're definitely making people think outside the box about what to expect from their Wi-Fi network. So thank you very much. Carlos, any other questions you want to, do we want to hang on the line? I'm quite happy to do that. Yeah, absolutely. There are no further questions at this stage. But guys, please do feel free to... Uh, to raise your hand on the app there and uh, obviously we'll be very happy to unmute uh, a line at a time so if you have a question for Ian then uh, we'll be uh, very happy to uh, allow you to ask that question directly um, is everybody thinking it was good <laughs> or is everybody go has everybody fallen to fallen asleep <laughs> Ooh, uh, We've got a great attentive rate, so uh, I'm hoping that uh, everybody's found it good. So uh, nobody's uh, actually raising their, their hand at the moment, Ian. So I think what we'll do is uh, that, that, let's wrap that up for, t for today. So, guys, thank you very much for giving us your time this morning to actually see the uh, presentation and see Mojo in, in action. Ian, thank you very much for your time as ever, my friend. Thank you for the brilliant uh, presentation. And, Guys, have a good rest of the, the day. I'll get the account managers to send on the recording and obviously follow up with any further questions. But uh, for the rest of the day, for you, thank you very much and have a great rest of the day. Thanks, guys. Goodbye.